On today's episode of Star Wars Factions Compared, we examine the frigates of the Republic, Empire, Rebel Alliance, and New Republic. Although I don't like an over-reliance on the Anaxes War College system, which is a ship classification system used in the Essential Guide to Warfare, I do generally agree that a frigate, in Star Wars terms, is a ship that is 2 to 400 meters in length, larger than a corvette, but certainly smaller than a cruiser. Frigates are usually primary support ships, mounting anti-starfighter weapons, protecting larger capital ships, but some are also able to operate independently. Those often have some turbo lasers. We need to be careful here when deciding what is and what isn't a frigate for the purposes of looking at the matchup. We're using frigate as a term of art, as explained above. However, in Star Wars, lots of ships also tack on the word frigate to, well, non-frigate ships. The best example of this would be the CIS's Munificent Frigate, which is probably a heavy cruiser, or the Rebels' Assault Frigate, which was a modified dreadnought. With that out of the way, today we'll be comparing the Rebel Nebulon B, the Imperial Lancer Frigate, the Republic Carrick, and the New Republic Corona. One thing I really like about a good frigate is that it can't afford to be poorly designed or inefficient. I think the best example of that is actually the Imperial Lancer, the first ship we'll be discussing. Now, I actually did a whole video about the Lancer a couple of weeks ago, but we'll go over some quick highlights here. The first is that the Lancer was one of, if not the best, anti-fighter capital ships operating during the Galactic Civil War. Here's an excerpt from X-Wing Rogue Squadron. Two ships, Carrot class and Lancer class, are in our exit vector. Wedge felt his stomach begin to fold in on itself. Control, confirm Lancer class frigate. The rare. Maybe this is a mistake. Please, let it be a mistake. Confirm Lancer class frigate. Orders? Lancer class frigates had been the Imperial Navy solution to the problem of snub fighters and the threat they posed to capital ships. All of 250 meters long, the boxy vessels were studded with 20 gunnery towers, each one sporting a Sinar Fleet Systems quad laser array. With its speed, which was exceptional for a big ship and those weapons, the Lancers were rankers amid a nerf herd. So Lancers are what would happen if you could somehow pack 80 starfighters worth of firepower into a single ship's body. Obviously thus, it can devastate enemy starfighters and is exceptional at protecting larger capital ships. There were however three main weaknesses, and I say that in quotes because two of them aren't really weaknesses, that this extraordinarily high degree of specialization imparted upon the Lancer. First, the Empire preferred brawny capital ships and turbo lasers. The Lancer, however, was armed simply and solely with 20 quad laser cannons. Unsurprisingly, then, the Empire only produced a few of these vessels, and none of them saw a lot of frontline service. Second, the Lancer's lack of turbo lasers and torpedo launchers meant that it could not engage enemy capital ships. Third, the ship totally lacked a hangar. Now, I think it would have been really interesting if the Lancer carried even a squadron of bombers. That way, it could enter the battle, thin out starfighters, then launch its own counterattack. Regardless, I think the Lancer is just a wonderful ship. It was 250 meters long, packed a class 1 hyperdrive, and as I said in a prior video, I think, honestly, could have turned the tide of the Galactic Civil War. Unfortunately, Lancers didn't see very much use, only really prospering briefly under Grand Admiral Thrawn during his campaign. Next up, we have the Lancer's big brother, the 350 meter long Carrick Cruiser. Like the Lancer, the Carrick was a surprisingly versatile and intelligently designed Imperial capital ship. Well, I say Imperial, but the Carrick was actually first used by the Republic, and that's what I'll be counting it as for this video. Sturdy for its size, well shielded and simply designed, the Carrick was sort of like a smaller Dreadnought class heavy cruiser, but without so much inefficiency. Carricks were somewhat modular and could mount laser cannons, but were typically geared totally for anti-capital ship combat with 10 turbo lasers and 20 ion cannons. This was a lot of firepower for a ship of its size. This loadout, alongside the Carrick's tractor beams, made it perfect for hunting down smugglers or pirates or protecting shipping lanes. That being said, the Carrick also saw lots of action operating as sort of a very light cruiser in battle. As you can probably tell, the Carrick and the Lancer were basically exact opposites. The Carrick wasn't a screening ship or an escort vessel, it was a proper warship. 
In the Imperial era, the Carrick would have been a stand-in for an ISD if the latter was unavailable or the protected world or space was unimportant. We saw that, for example, at Bakura. A modified variant of the Carrick, the Carrick A, swapped ion cannons out for point defense lasers, but this model seemed to be quite rare, and that's likely due to the fact that the Carrick was often relied on to disable ships. Aside from its immense firepower for its size, the Carrick's sturdiness was probably its biggest asset. However, the numerous and sizable internal bulkheads meant that there was no room for internal hangar space. Fighters were sometimes carried on external racks, but this does seem like an odd choice for a vessel which operated often independently. Carricks were used especially by the Empire as Star Destroyers dwindled, then the New Republic, which was looking to supplement its navy. Next up, we have the Nebulon B, definitely the most famous frigate in Star Wars. The Nebulon B is another frigate design used by the Empire, which I find sort of ironic given that the Empire is most well known for using a buttload of Star Destroyers. Anyway, Nebulon Bs were created by the Empire, but were often stolen, then later used by the Rebel Alliance. The Empire intended them as escort ships, but they took on a more direct combat role within the resource-stricken Alliance, which was actually fine because the Nebulon B has a nice mix of both turbo lasers and point defense guns. Interestingly, despite its slow speed, the Nebulon B was actually great at operating independently, largely due to its very sophisticated sensors and communication equipment. In addition, the 300 meter long vessel could carry two quadrants, at least allegedly. This is a sort of weird bit of lore, because the Nebulon B doesn't have any obvious hangar space, but we'll go with it. As the Alliance secured more heavy heavy tonnage capital ships, Nebulon Bs were sometimes converted into medical frigates, like the Redemption. The ship was quite modular, so some of the weapons emplacements were swapped out for redundant shield projectors. One major issue with the Nebulon B, however, was that the vessel could not fire backwards and had that strangely narrow vulnerable section in the middle, which could be cracked in half. Finally though, we have the New Republic's Corona class, and honestly, I included this ship because I wanted something that wasn't an Imperial design, and because the CIS don't really have a great frigate for themselves. I also kind of felt like dunking on the Nebulon B. The Corona, despite being 25 meters smaller than the Nebulon B, was just as well armed, with four ion cannons swapping out a pair of turbo lasers and laser cannons each. It also possessed a similar strength shield, and unsurprisingly, given the New Republic's flexible quick response fleet doctrine, a class 1 hyperdrive, an upgrade over the Nebulon B. The Corona was much thicker than its predecessor and lacked the vulnerable midsection as well. Some of this extra bulk was used for starfighter storage, and the Corona could hold up to three squadrons. The vessel was moderately popular and used frequently by the New Republic designed to complement Star Destroyers and larger vessels. As an aside, New Republic ships of this era were generally very flexible and well designed, and the Corona is no exception. With that being said, let's rank these ships from worst to best, and this is no easy task because for once, every vessel on today's video is actually pretty good. I'll touch on that in just a second, but coming in I think pretty clearly at number 4 is the Nebulon B. Now, the Nebulon B was a great ship. It was versatile and it served the Alliance quite well. However, it was neither as specialized as the Carrick or Lancer, or as all around good as the Corona, which is why I think we saw some of the capital ships be converted into medical frigates. It's also really hard to ignore or the glaring weakness with the midsection and the unprotected engine arrays. Moving on, it's really hard to place the next three ships, and that's because each one actually exemplifies a different aspect of frigate design. The Corona is sort of well-rounded, the Lancer is anti-starfighter, and the Carrick is anti-capital ship. It's truly an apples to oranges comparison, which is why I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts down below. However, me personally, coming in at number three is the Carrick. I think the Carrick is great, it's incredibly practical, it's very well armed, and it's sturdy. However, just personally, I don't think frigates are the best place to put a dedicated anti-capital ship vessel. Most cases, if you're going that route, I think 
think why not just go to even a light cruiser or something like a dreadnought, a little bit larger. However, that's not really the sore spot for me. If it had fighters, I think that would have pushed it over the edge into number two. Instead, I think occupying that space is the New Republic's Corona class, again, an upgrade over the Nebulon B. It's quite difficult to beat New Republic engineering, and I think one of the only ways you do is by being the very best vessel in your class. Highly specialized, highly effective, and dangerous enough to even scare Wedge Antilles. That's the Lancer at number one. As I said earlier, I truly believe the Lancer is one of the best anti-starfighter capital ships in Star Wars history. It's got 20 quad lasers with that sort of unique tower system. It's fast and it does its job very well, a job which I think is perfect for a frigate-sized capital ship. With the other vessels, I can clearly pick out some weaknesses. The Carrick should probably have starfighters. I think the Corona is outclassed by other New Republic vessels and generally could have been a better upgrade over the Nebulon B. And the Nebulon obviously has issues of its own. But the only thing I can really point out for the Lancer is that it doesn't have starfighters, which I don't think is a huge problem given that it will always be operating with other capital ships and that the Empire didn't use it properly. But that's on the Empire, not on the Lancer. I really love this ship design, I think it's great, and to me it tops a list of four great vessels. But what do you think? Do you prefer something loaded with turbo lasers and quite strong like the Carrick? Do you like the Lancer, which operates an incredibly specialized anti-starfighter role, or do you prefer the Corona or the Nebulon B, more sort of mixed-use, well-rounded vessels? Let me know what you think down in the comments and what you think of my ranking generally. Until next time guys, this has been Eckhart Slatter. Have a great week and as always, may the Force be with you.